Hi, I'm Ankur Variku. I'm an entrepreneur, a content creator, and an author. My latest book, Get Epic Shit Done, is out now. It's <laughs> it's not going to be a regular one. No. Oh. No, no it's not going to be a regular. Something one. different. So I ask question and you do da 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 da. Okay, I'll try. So we are doing it up in front. Perfect. I'm nervous. Yeah. So shall we roll then? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Yes. Okay. <laughs> good people pay a far higher price for being good than bad people pay for being bad. If your boss steals your credit, then you have two options. Either stick around because eventually they will get promoted because of the stealing of credit and then you will fill in this spot. Or two, just move out because you're not going to be acknowledged ever. You have a very bitchy colleague. My suggestion would be just lay low because people who bitch around would always do that and there is frankly nothing that you can do to prevent it. Just lay low, don't engage, don't confront and you should be okay. How do I deal with a very cranky and forgetful boss? This has one solution in my head. Please document everything that you can. It may sound like you are parenting them, but it is necessary. So every conversation you have, send them back an email with the minutes of meeting. Every decision that they may share with you, send it back to them in a way that you're reminding them of the decision that they took. Anything that they tell you on the fly has to be converted into a documented proof to safeguard yourself and also in some way help them because they're forgetful. So if you find yourself not making enough money, it could be because you actually need a lot more in life or because you're actually in the wrong profession which cannot by design give you a lot of money. At the age of 30, your bank balance has to be determined by what gives you three things. Number one, it gives you flexibility and control over your future goals that start with any big expense that you may have to your retirement. Number two, it takes care of any emergency that you would find yourself in, God forbid. And number three, it allows you to enjoy life and not kill yourself today for a future that you're planning for that you may or may not end up enjoying. My right way would be the minute you get money, create another bank account and just sweep a certain amount of money instantly. Whatever is left is what you have to live your life in because that's the only way you can set yourself up for that discipline. Here are three reasons why you should use a credit card. Number one, you're getting an interest-free loan for 30 to 45 days. Number two, if, and that is an important if, if you pay your entire monthly bill in full, you build your credit score that helps you get loans at a better rate, get loans in the first place itself. And number three, you get freebies, a lot of them. However, falling into credit is a disaster. The way to think about stock market is you have to deal with the volatility, which is basically the up and down of the stock market that happens. But over a period of time, there is a very clear upward trend. So you should not invest in the stock market if your time frame of investment is too small, which could be one, three years or so. But if your time frame suddenly extends to five, 10, 15 years, it's the best place to be. If your partner is jealous, possessive, then you have to reconsider your relationship. And here's why. Because they feel that they own you. And that means that you will never be allowed to live like an independent self. And you will always be living under the shadow of somebody else. I believe that the adjustment should be around things that make you better. Because if any relationship is forcing you to change into somebody that you don't personally like, 
that's not an adjustment. It is a compromise. It is you trending towards mediocrity. I believe in a relationship, there are some fundamental things that need to be aligned. While you can attract the opposite and still make it work, the only reason it will work is these values are aligned. Because then the excitement or the opposite only makes it interesting. But if there is misalignment on values, then you're heading for trouble. If you love your partner and you keep getting attracted to other people, that means that there's something in them that you're drawn towards which your partner cannot offer. And if it is something short term, which could be physical attraction, it could be a feeling of excitement, it's no better than you endlessly scrolling social media because it's a dopamine hit and your dopamine is not coming from social media but from people instead. But if it's a long term thing, you may do yourself a great favor by expressing that to your partner itself because you do love them. Our parents want from us the exact same things that we want from our life. The path is different. The destination is exactly the same. They want the same thing that you want, then it is not lack of understanding. It's a lack of realization of what all can get them there. And then it becomes your responsibility to sensitize them and to make them aware of that. I, I genuinely believe that in any relationship, the best space that you can give is for people to hold a contrarian point of view and you still are okay with that because that's true acceptance. If you are trying to change somebody because you hold a point of view and the other person has an opposite point of view, then what you're essentially hinting towards is one's right and one's wrong. So while growing up, technically our parents are our investors. They are the ones who are funding us. They're the ones who are funding our lifestyle. They're the ones who are funding our education. They're the ones who are funding our desires to a great extent as well. And until you don't become financially independent, you are in many ways answerable to your parents. The day you do become financially independent, the only thing that I believe you owe your parents is your time. Number one, their money is their money and your money is yours, which means they have every right to think of their money whichever way they want to, and thus you also have the same right. Number two, you have to understand that where they come from, the way money was talked of and trained is very, very, very different from the world that we are growing in. For them, survival was key. For them, money was a source of survival, not so. And that's why it's very hard for the two generations to have the same worldview around money. And let that be. Sometimes moving out of a relationship is the best way to save it. So I often tell that if you do not get along with your parents, you staying with them is only going to destroy and worsen that relationship. So if you truly love them, move out. How do you know you're depressed is the same way that you would know that you're not feeling well. It has to be validated by someone who's an expert. The feeling may be there, but please do not be unfair on yourself by Googling this out and running through a few pop quizzes that tell you whether you are or you're not. This is a matter of concern. Great question because often the reactions of people may not stem from their core personality but what they may be going through. And the best thing that I have personally realized in these circumstances is to have a conversation which is absolutely devoid of any judgment. The best form of sharing is not sharing with others, but sharing with your own self. So good way of doing that is, for example, journaling. When you journal, when you write down what you're feeling, you're essentially sharing it as if you were observing your own self and then documenting whatever is it that you're feeling, whether right, whether wrong, there's no judgment, there is no ridicule, there's no shame, there's no guilt. It ironically and paradoxically also makes you comfortable sharing with others. It's okay to feel this way. Don't shut that emotion down. Don't make yourself feel guilty or ashamed or embarrassed that you're feeling this way. 
because we all go through these motions. So feel it for a second, feel it for an hour, feel it for a day, feel it for perhaps even a week. Just don't make it your permanent reality. Know that everything that you're feeling today will eventually fade and this shall pass too.